and welcome to this video where we're going to be talking through my Crazy Oddworld collection. Not only do I have most of the games on various different platforms, but I've also got a few pieces of the Oddworld merch that I think are really interesting. So let's crack on with it. The first thing we've got to talk about is Oddworld Abe's Odyssey for the PS1. This is my original childhood copy of the game, and of course I never sold it because it's one of my favourite games of all time. It's in pretty good condition considering that I've had it since I was a kid, and it's complete with the manual and everything. In fact, the manuals for the Oddworld games are some of the best video game manuals I think I've ever seen. They go into so much detail about all of the different characters and the universe in general, and it's a really good read. It even talks a little bit about the whole Oddworld quintology, and how the intention was to do five main Oddworld games, with bonus games outside of that sprinkled throughout the series too. Of course, this never actually happened, and at the moment they've only done two Quintology games, but it's interesting seeing them talk about this whole Quintology thing when it was only the one game at the time. The next thing I've got in my Oddworld collection is Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, again, but this time it's the PC version. Now, I'm pretty sure that there were different versions of this game that were released physically on PC, so I'm not entirely sure like which one this is or when it was released or anything, uh, but this particular version isn't as good as the PS1 physical edition because it doesn't even come with a manual. There's not really all too much to talk about with this. Basically, the only reason that I actually have this in my collection is because I wanted the PC version and it was way before Steam was even a thing. So my only option to play it on PC was to get the physical version. There are actually some really minor differences between the PC and the PS1 version. Like, the PC version runs a lot faster but also some of the sprites are slightly different and there's a weird like icon that appears when you reach checkpoints that isn't in the PS1 version. So yeah, it is interesting to go through if you're a big fan of the series. Then we move on to Oddworld Abe's Exodus for the PS1. This is actually really interesting because this is one of the very few PS1 games that is actually spread across two discs. There are obviously a few others out there that do this, like off the top of my head, Heart of Darkness has two discs, uh, Final Fantasy VII obviously has multiple discs, and Metal Gear Solid does, but I still feel like that was a pretty uncommon thing at the time. Something that I really love about this though is how this game's two discs actually feature completely different artwork, with one being bright green and the other being purple. That's a really nice detail because the other games that I have that are split across two discs, the discs actually look the same as each other, so it's nice that this game has some sort of distinction between the two. The manual with this game is also just as good as the first one, going into loads of detail about the new inhabitants, going through all of the different game speak options that were new to this game, and all kinds of stuff. It's definitely a really cool game to have the physical version for. And then just like with Abe's Odyssey, of course, I also have the physical PC version for Abe's Exodus as well. This game's case isn't as good because it's got this like weird replay branding all over it, so I can only assume that my version of this game was like some kind of reissue of the original version. But still, at the time, this was the only way that I could play the PC version of Abe's Exodus. Again, there's not really a lot to talk about here, it's pretty much the same as the PS1 version, only the case is nowhere near as good, the two discs have the same design on them, and there's no manual. So really, nowadays, there's not really much of a reason to own the physical PC version, unless you're just a hardcore fan. Next, we're going up a console generation, and talking about Oddworld Muncher's Odyssey for the original Xbox. Now, I'm actually a little bit sceptical as to whether my version of this is actually legit, or to be more specific, I'm sceptical as to whether the actual printed artwork is legit. It just looks a little bit low quality, like it wasn't printed properly, and I don't know if this is a problem with every copy of the game, or whether mine just is fake. But even so, this is the copy of the game that I had since I was a kid, so if it is fake, I've kind of gotten used to it by now. I've actually heard that the original Xbox version of this game is maybe slightly better than some of the more recent versions. When I did my review of this, I was actually reviewing the PS3 version, which supposedly is one of the worst versions. Other than that, once again, this game has a pretty good manual. It's not as good as the original two games, but it's still an interesting read. 
speed. Then we move on to the second version of Munch's Odyssey that I own, outside of digital versions. Digitally I actually have the PS3 version and the PC version, but physical wise, I also have the Switch version. Now, you might be asking why I own this game four times technically if I don't even like it, and the reason for that is that I'm a sucker. If I see something Oddworld related, I do find it very difficult not to just throw money at it, just because of how much I like the franchise. One of the main reasons that I wanted this particular version of the game though is because it actually has an illustrated spine which lines up with the other two Oddworld Switch games. So it would have just have looked a bit weird if I didn't have this one. This version of the game is particularly cool though, because if you get the limited edition version, not only does it come with the outer sleeve with the illustrated spine that I just talked about, but it also comes with this little holographic card that you can put in the sleeve to make the box art pop, and it also comes with a keyring and stickers too. It really is a shame that it doesn't have a manual though, because I really think that would have tied it all together. But still, as far as modern physical releases go, this one's pretty good. The next game I have in my collection is the original Xbox version of Stranger's Wrath. Now with this one, I'm actually pretty confident that this is the official sleeve for the game, because the print quality is way higher than Munch's Odyssey. Nowadays, there isn't really too much of a reason to own this particular version of the game, just because the more recent HD versions are pretty much better in every single way. I'm pretty sure that this version didn't even feature difficulty options, and it was like you were just playing it on hard by default, so some of the fights were actually insanely difficult in this version. This game's manual is also significantly weaker than with the other Oddworld games. It's written in a way that's more like a traditional manual, rather than in a way that actually fits with the whole Oddworld theme in, which is a little bit disappointing to see, but at least it does have a manual, right? Next up, you probably saw this one coming, it's the Switch version of Stranger's Wrath. For the longest time, I didn't actually own a physical version of Stranger's Wrath HD, and at one point I really did want the physical limited run version that they did for PS3, because I know that that one came with a load of goodies as well. But I think at the time that that was released, I just didn't have the money to be able to actually throw at it, so it made me even happier having missed out on that when they announced the physical Switch version for this. In terms of bonuses that you get with the physical release of this, it's the same as Muncher's Odyssey. So you get the outer sleeve, you get the holographic card, a key ring, and stickers. Again, it's a really good package and I highly recommend you pick this up if you're a fan of the game. This next one is a little bit interesting because it's actually the PS4 physical version of New and Tasty. This was actually a very early release done by Limited Run Games. In fact, it might have only have been the second game that they put out. Now, obviously, Limited Run Games and other similar companies are quite well known, but back then, I feel like it was quite a niche thing to be into. But of course, as soon as I saw that they were doing a physical version of this, I had to get it because it's Oddworld. Plus, at the time, it was a really novel concept having a physical version of what would have been a digital-only game. The one slightly disappointing thing with this, though, is that it doesn't actually come with a lot of extras. It comes with this thing that sort of, like, imitates a manual, but when you open it, it's just all of the legal jargon. It comes with a limited run sticker, and it comes with this really poorly printed art card that's way too dark for some reason. I don't know why it looks like this, maybe I just got like a dud version of it or something, but yeah, that's always looked a little bit cheap to me. At the time though, this was the only physical version of this game that existed, along with the physical Vita version that they did at the same time, but I don't actually have that. But either way, I was really happy to have this in my collection at the time, and I still am. Now I know you all definitely saw this one coming, in, but the final game that I have in my Oddworld game collection is new and tasty for the Switch. This completes the trilogy of Oddworld games that are currently released on the Switch. And like I said earlier, when you put these three games together with their outer sleeves, they have this illustrated spine collage that comes together and looks really nice. Just like with Stranger's Wrath HD and Muncher's Odyssey HD for the Switch, this one also comes with the holographic card, keyring, and stickers. So yeah, all three of them together make for a pretty cool package. They also did do like a triple pack that comes with all three of the games, but this is all in one box and it doesn't come with all of the goodies. 
but if you just look into play the games, that would probably be a good option to go for too. Because I've got all of the games individually there, I don't really have any reason to go out and get the all-in-one version. But still, it's pretty cool that they did that for anybody that doesn't have any of the games individually yet. Now we're moving on to what could potentially be the more interesting part of the video though, because now we're talking about all of my Oddworld merch. Now, Oddworld don't normally put out that much merchandise, and whenever they do, it's normally limited limited and in very low quantities. So to be honest, I'm really lucky and I'm really grateful to even have any of this stuff. But the first thing I want to talk about is actually this plush of Alf the Madokan. This is made by a company called Esk Toys and is official Oddworld merchandise. They did a Kickstarter where they made Abe and Munch plushes, and then I think one of the like tiers unlocked Alf and other versions of Munch wearing like a Lulu outfit and stuff. But yeah, the way I got my hands on this is that after the Kickstarter ended, Esk Toys were doing like a clear out of the stock and selling all the remaining plushes for really cheap. And I just so happened to be lucky enough to get in there fast and get one of the last remaining Alf plushes. Unfortunately, I don't own any of the others. I would really, really like to get my hands on the Abe and Munch ones at some point, but it's actually really rare to even see them go up for sale anywhere. In fact, off the top of my head, I don't even think I've ever seen one of these elves go up on eBay. So yeah, I don't actually know how rare this thing is. For all I know, I'm sitting on a gold mine. But yeah, I don't think I would ever sell him, just because I like having him as a part of my Oddworld collection. And he isn't just a pretty face either, because if you squeeze his head, he makes fart sound effects. Just listen. Beautiful stuff. Now this I'm really happy to have in my collection because just like with the ALF plush, you don't see this ever go up for sale anywhere. It's the new and tasty vinyl. Now this was made by a company called Black Screen Records, and I believe that this was actually the first ever release that they put out. They specialise in putting game soundtracks, and I think also they put some film soundtracks onto vinyl. I'm pretty sure that they're only ever released in really limited capacity as well, so I'm just really lucky to have this in my collection. Obviously this would be really good even if it was just a black vinyl sat in a case like this, but they really went above and beyond and there's even this double-sided poster that has some art from the original Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, and on the other side is a poster for New and Tasty. I mean, just look at this thing. This is really, really cool. I would love to actually get this framed one day and hang it somewhere in the game room. Maybe I should actually do that, because this is too good to just be sat somewhere gathering dust, right? But for now, I'm just happy keeping it safe where it's not going to get damaged at all. And as if that isn't enough, the vinyl itself is green, and it also has the Scribania and Paramonia logos on either side as well. I mean, how cool of a package is this? It's definitely one of my favourite things things that I've got in my entire Oddworld collection, but then again I could say that about literally everything that I've got in my Oddworld collection, but you get my point, it's just cool. Now I know I just said that that vinyl is one of my favourite things that I've got in my entire Oddworld collection, but these next two things truly are one of my favourite Oddworld things. In fact I would take things a step further and say that these next two items are possibly two of my favourite things in my entire game collection. The first of which is the first Oddworld art book. This one is titled The Art of Oddworld Inhabitants The First Ten Years. So it covers all of the games released up until 2004, back when Stranger's Wrath was the newest game. My assumption with this is that they intended to do a second art book called The Second Ten Years, but because of the, like, turbulent time that Oddworld Inhabitants had after Stranger's Wrath, that never happened or at least it didn't happen in the way they thought it would. But even so, this book is such a treasure trove of information, going behind the scenes with all of the games and looking at really early concept art for them all. In terms of Oddworld merchandise, this is by far one of the most interesting things you could have in your collection. The artwork is stunning, it goes into loads of information about what you're actually looking at, it goes into the history of the development of the games and the company as a whole. I just absolutely love this thing. The one issue with it is that it is quite expensive nowadays because they aren't printing it anymore, but if you do have the funds to get your hands on this, I definitely recommend it. It's worth the price. Now though, if you thought that that was good, then check this out. 
the second Oddworld art book. This one was released much more recently and was made by a company called Indie by Design, and they have potentially even upped the previous art book. Not only is it quite significantly thicker, but I would even go as far as to say that the actual quality of the print is a lot higher too, giving you an even clearer look at some of this artwork. Everything about this book just absolutely screams quality. The pages are really thick, the cover design is minimal yet eye-catching, it's got a really in-depth interview with Lorne Lannan about how we got into game development and how we created the Oddworld universe. And plus, with this art book being a lot newer, it also goes into some information about Oddworld Soulstorm too. Because I backed this thing on Kickstarter, I also got a few bonuses with it too, one of which being the green dust jacket that I always keep on it for protection. But the second thing that I got as a bonus is actually this thing right here made by Limited Run Games, which is actually a re release of Abe's Odyssey and Exodus for the PC. So inside this box is actually a little, like, jewel case that looks very similar to the previous PC releases of Abe's Odyssey and Exodus, but instead of them being on CDs, it's both games on one DVD. One of the best things about this package, though, is that just like the PS1 releases, this comes with its own unique manual for the games. And I've got to say, they really outdid themselves with this, because it's not really a manual, and it's more so just like an in-universe employee handbook. So I guess the concept with this is that if you went to work at Rupture Farms, they would give you this handbook to read through before you started your job. It's honestly so, so good, and it really brings this whole package together. If you think we're finished there, though, you've got another thing coming, because not only did the art book also come with its own bookmark, which is really cool, and I actually use that for all of my reading, but the re-release of Abe's Odyssey and Exodus for the PC that we just talked about also came with these art cards, too. These art cards are absolutely amazing and printed on really high-quality cardboard, and I really should work on displaying these somewhere where, but I'm kind of scared that they're gonna get damaged if I put them out on display. So for now at least, I do tend to just keep them in the box, which is maybe a little bit stupid. I should probably work on displaying this stuff a bit better. But yeah, how good was this package when it was on Kickstarter? Not only did you get the art book, you also got the dust jacket, you got the PC games re-released physically on PC for the first ever time, you got these art cards, you got the bookmark, you got the manual. I mean, geez, it just never ends. But yeah, if you do want to get your hands on this art book, it's called Oddworld Abe's Origins, and it's actually really cheap. I looked online the other day just to see how much it was going for, and it's only £35 here in the UK. Seriously, if you're an Oddworld fan and you don't already have this, you need to get it. It's well worth the money, and it's such an interesting read. The final, final thing that I've got left to talk Talk about, at least I think unless I've forgotten anything, is this. So this is actually an Oddworld themed tin sign that I got from a website called Game Tea, and it's officially licensed Oddworld merchandise. You can still actually get this even to this day, and they also do some Oddworld themed clothes that are officially licensed too that are really cool. I don't actually have any of those yet though, maybe I should invest in some Oddworld t-shirts. But yeah, this sign is an advert for Paramite Pies and Scrab Cakes, and it goes just in the entryway to the kitchen, which I think makes sense because it's like you're entering the kitchen to make paramite pies and scrab cakes. So I think it's thematically on point there rather than in the game room. Plus, it's just nice to spread the odd world theme in around the house a bit. But yeah, as far as I'm aware, I don't think I've forgotten anything. That is my entire odd world collection. That about wraps up the video. So give it a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more stuff like this coming soon, and leave a comment down below letting me know what your favourite Oddworld themed thing was from this video. And until next time, bye!